Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here to talk about the season we're in. The season of evil. Yeah, sounds a little spooky. I know I'm a little on the dramatic side. But there is a lot of truth to that. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 14 warns us, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, I say that to say, don't be surprised at strange behavior that takes place during this season. I remember, I'm going to tell on myself, okay, to warn you about how children can do things, weird, bizarre things, and they hurt other people. Okay, listen, I was about four and a half years old. This lady used to do my hair. She was a hairstylist. I liked her. I liked getting my hair done. However, one day, she happened to stop in front of our house. I was at my godparents' home. I was staying with them for about a year and a half while my mother was recovering in an asylum. And she was standing out talking to a few friends of mine and me. And we were all just standing there listening to her. And all of a sudden, listen to this. Out of nowhere, I got the urge. I mean, it was an urge. It was bizarre. Even when I think about it now, it's so weird. But I got a sudden urge to lean forward and take one big bite in her arm. That woman hauled off and slapped the daylights out of me. <laughs> and she said, what the heck? What's wrong with you? And I stood there like, I don't know. <laughs> I saw her, check it out. I saw her about six years later. I was with my mother on a bus. And this woman happened to be on that bus, and she said, Is your name Patricia Love? And I said, Yeah. And she said, Do you remember me? And I said, No. She said, I used to do your hair when you were at the Buzzies. Oh, my goodness, how you doing? Right? She never forgot this now. I didn't either, but, I mean, she was the one hurt, so it was a big stinger memory in her head she said do you remember what you did to me when I when you were little I, and I sheepishly said you mean when I bit you and she said yes I have to ask you one question what made you do that I couldn't answer her I'm sitting there feeling nervous now and oh my goodness what do I say I you know it's like I was sorry I did it and but I couldn't answer her I said I, I don't know and she just shook her head like, wow. I've never done any, anything like that since. That's the kind of bizarre stuff I'm talking about. You watch your kids more carefully during this season when they're playing alone in a room. One kid might decide they want to see what it looks like when a pencil penetrates another sibling's arm. Or I. I mean, you have no idea. These aren't bad kids. Something comes on them, and they're driven to do something. And when you ask them why, they really, really don't know why. Now, I'm not talking about repeated activity. Now, you know you got a, a psycho in the making on your hands then. I'm talking about a one-time incident that is just so beyond and, and, and aside from their norm. That's why it pays to stay a little closer to kids during this time. And pray over those kids. Pray protection against the enemy using them. And pray protection against the enemy using someone else to hurt them. You hear me? Okay. Just thought I'd tell on myself so you'd see what I mean about how a demon can move on a child. And a child doesn't even understand what's going on. Oh, I understood it once I got saved. I knew what was behind that. 
because I remembered how I felt. But I tell you, a lot of people go through that and they give in and they don't feel bad. And the demon doesn't just come and then go away like a fly, swat the fly, he's gone. No, this demon comes to stay and he calls a whole lot of others worse than he. That's when you end up with a psycho in the making. You got to be real careful. Our weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So you can't beat it out of them sometimes. Sometimes you have to pray it out of them. You have to rebuke the demons that manipulate them so easily. You have to rebuke their fascination with evil. I mean, you have to cover them in the blood of Jesus. You have to do everything you can. And hey, if it means for the sake of the family's safety, you got to put them away. You may have to do that because they're going to need, that's a job for Superman. You're not equipped for it. Unless God equips you, you could be putting people in your family in danger. So you watch your kids extra closely during this time of year. You be very careful. And another thing, let me give you another tidbit. You married people, don't argue during this time. Don't escalate. Don't get agitated. Don't irritate each other. Don't push each other's buttons. Watch that. Back up off of it. Go outside, take a walk. Or just say, let's drop it for now. Don't deal with it. Because I'm going to tell you, these are the times when those prayers are heightened and the spells and hexes and curses and all kind of nonsense and demons are called up and sent forth. You do not want to be used by the devil and come to out of your stupor and realize you have just about killed your family members, if not having maimed them for the rest of their lives. And you don't even remember what you did. Yeah, that's not flesh and blood. That's principalities. That's wickedness in high places. Be very careful now. That's my warning. I really feel like a lot of you need to be warned because you don't know what you're fighting and you don't know what's fighting you. Amen? Prayer time, you guys. <laughs>